This corresponds to almost 5 liters of milk per kilogram of concentrate. This production ensures an average daily gain of 1,200 grams per day. Today, we work with three groups. One group of primi Paris cows, one group of multi Paris cows, and a low production group. The compost barn management here is very simple and streamlined. It is done twice a day, where the bedding is turned twice daily using a rotary harrow. The feed alley is also cleaned twice a day, during both milkings. The water troughs are cleaned regularly as well. Feeding is provided in two sessions per day, once in the morning during the first milking and again in the afternoon. We always aim to have fresh feed available when the cows return from milking. One challenge we currently face on the farm is stocking density. With the herd's growth, we have become limited in space, resulting in overstocking in the compost barn. We have noticed that the feed bunk space is not as ideal as we would like, and the bedding area is also facing challenges. However, with the drier weather now that summer is approaching, conditions have been a bit more manageable compared to the winter. Today, we work with three groups. One group of primi Paris cows, one group of multi Paris cows, and a low production group. After calving, they are assigned directly to either the primi Paris or multi Paris group. We do not have a post fresh group. They go directly into these groups. We try to keep them in their respective groups until they reach at least 200 days in milk. After that, we reallocate them based on space availability, milk protein levels, pregnancy status, and DIM. In the future, with the free stall, we will have to reorganize into four groups. I will need to distribute the cows more evenly across the groups. As for their feed, the total mixed ration is mainly composed of corn silage with a small amount of oat silage. It also includes a protein concentrate that comes pre-mixed with all additives, such as buffers, mineral salts, adsorbents, cottonseed, and extruded soybean meal with canola. Basically, it's a very simple diet. The farm's goal is to produce high-quality forage, specifically high-quality corn silage. We aim to achieve the right chop length and good dry matter content to reduce the need for concentrates and optimize milk production per unit of concentrate fed. By producing high-quality forage on the farm, especially corn silage with a high starch content, we can achieve good feed conversion efficiency in these animals. The group of multi parous cows, for example, is currently averaging 50 liters. These animals consume around 11 kilograms of concentrate per day. This results in nearly five liters of milk per kilogram of concentrate, which is an excellent feed conversion rate. This is what we strive for on the farm productive animals that generate profitability for the operation. We have staff working along the feed bunk, managing ventilation, and also in the holding area. We prioritize having more staff in the holding area than at the feed bunk because the cows still walk to the milking parlor. We focus on ensuring they cool down before milking, but we also have staff assigned to the feed bunk area. This is the calf rearing area here at Santa Elmira Farm. We work with two systems. Calves stay in individual hutches until they are 21 days old. After 21 days, they move to the group system, which uses an automatic feeder. We have two automatic feeder pens, each capable of feeding up to 50 calves, 25 on each side. The calves are grouped based on size and space, with the larger ones in one section and the smaller ones in another. In the back, we have two post-weaning paddocks, where the calves stay before being moved outside. When a calf is born, it is placed in these hutches, where it receives colostrum four liters. The navel is treated, and the calf is kept warm. We have hutches equipped with heat lamps to warm the calves during colder days. Calves remain in these hutches until they are 21 days old. During this period, they are fed 7 liters of milk per day, 3.5 liters in the morning, and 3.5 liters in the afternoon. 
The milk is milk replacer powder, prepared at a concentration of 140 grams per liter, 14%. After 21 days, they move to the group system, where they continue to receive milk replacer powder via the automatic feeder. The feeder can handle up to 50 calves, 25 in each section. It identifies each calf through an electronic tag, similar to the system used for milking cows, and dispenses a preset daily volume of milk. In this group system, the calves are fed 7.5 liters of milk replacer daily, also prepared at a 14% concentration. From the first day in the hutches, calves have access to water and pelleted feed containing 24% crude protein. This feed is available in both the individual hutches and the group pens. It is offered from the first day of life, allowing the calves to gradually learn to eat and increase their intake over time. Here we have the weaned animals. We also have two post-weaning paddocks, which are separated by size. However, these paddocks are currently overcrowded, thankfully. We have plenty of calves. These animals receive the same diet as the high-producing multiparous group. So, the same total mixed ration prepared for the cows is offered to them here, ensuring an average daily gain of 1.2 kilograms per day. The plan, once the cows move to the free stall, is to use the compost barn currently housing the cows for the heifers. This will allow us to improve the available space, move some animals there, and reduce overcrowding here. The animals currently outside will be relocated to this barn. We will set up paddocks with partitions and enclosures to create groups based on size until they are ready for insemination. They will remain in the barn at least until they are pregnant. Here, we also have an improvised prepartum area for heifers. On the other side, we have the prepartum area for cows. We bring them in 21 days before calving. During this period, their prepartum diet is mainly corn silage, wheat straw, and a prepartum concentrate. We also include choline and methionine additives in the prepartum diet. I have been using this device quite frequently on farms. I take measurements every five meters along the feed alley to assess the uniformity of the mix. With it, I can analyze dry matter, crude protein, starch, neutral detergent fiber, acid detergent fiber, and ash. I also use it to analyze silage, haylage, and raw materials. We formulate the diet after analyzing the raw materials. The feeder then prepares the mixes and we analyze the total mixed ration on the same day. This means we leave here with the entire diet ready. Before starting the analysis, I calibrate the device. The results are sent immediately to my cell phone. The device uses near-infrared reflectance to measure the values and averages the data from six scans. Afterward, the results are displayed on the cell phone. Here, I have the diet results, dry matter at 42% in the multi-paris group, starch at 29.2%, acid detergent fiber at 18.4%, ether extract at 5%, crude protein at 16.9%, and ash at 0.7%, 8%. Here will be the future facilities for the cows. It is a free stall with sand bedding and a flushing system. There will also be a settling area for sand recovery and a biodigester to utilize the manure for energy production. This free stall will have the capacity to house 300 lactating cows. We chose the free stall instead of the compost barn because our region is very humid. Managing a compost barn is quite challenging 
especially in the winter. In this region, we have two reservoirs located very close by. So, in addition to rain during winter, we also deal with a lot of fog and humidity. This makes it difficult to dry the bedding, especially with a stocking density that would not be ideal for the compost barn. That's why we opted for the free stall, to provide greater comfort for the animals and also to make the work easier for the team. Since all this work is carried out by people, we want to ensure the cows are cleaner when they arrive at the milking parlor. This will make the job easier for the women in the milking parlor, helping us maintain healthier and more productive animals. The free stall system is also designed to simplify tasks for everyone on the farm, improving both workflow and results. The key differentiator of this farm is the impressive production numbers we've been able to achieve, thanks to the Mike Hutchins course, which I often recommend to anyone wanting to excel in this field. This course has helped us refine the diet significantly. A few years ago, high production levels meant achieving 40 to 42 litres with three milkings per day. Today, we're reaching 50 litres on many farms, and even farms with two milkings per day are producing 40 litres. These are remarkable numbers. I believe the turning point was implementing insights from the Mike Hutchins course alongside the new NASEM guidelines. These advancements allowed us to precisely quantify the amino acid balance. We've moved away from focusing on crude protein to metabolizable protein. Similarly, we no longer rely on crude starch levels, but rather on starch fermentation. This shift has greatly improved our ability to assess silage and feed quality and determine which ingredients to use. In the past, we struggled to understand why some farms responded better to diets with crude starch levels of 26 to 28%. Now, we know that factors like the ensiling duration and corn variety make a significant difference. Today, we can quantify how much starch will ferment and use that data to guide the farm's starch utilization strategy. For example, we currently aim for a fermentation peak of approximately 20%. This level provides a clear direction and allows us to confidently work with higher crude starch levels. By optimizing the use of high moisture corn at ideal levels, we've achieved not only high production averages, but also healthier animals. This balance has enabled us to demand more from the cows while ensuring their well-being.